Hello everyone, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, uh, depending on where you're watching us from. Uh, my name is Geoffrey Kaira, um, I'm from Uganda and I'll be the moderator for today. Um, welcome to the Shinag Africa Initiative webinar. This is the first of a series of webinars that's going to uh, run for this recruitment cycle. If you're interested in the Ashinaga Africa Initiative, please keep an eye on the Ashinaga Facebook page and our other social medias. We're going to be posting about the different webinars we'll be having uh, so that we can, uh, we're can. we going to be tackling different topics to be able to allow you to ask us questions and also know how to make your application a strong one. You'll get so many uh, experiences, so many people who have gone through the, the program will be telling you how they went through the program and they'll be sharing you tips on how to make your application a strong one so that you can be able to uh, both uh, be accepted in the Shinaga African GT program. For this webinar, I uh, will bring you candidates who have been selected actually in this year. They've uh, gone through the, uh, the applied and the uh, accepted this year. Uh, they will share with us their experiences uh, for the Shinaga African initiative. We are working with Ashinaga Uganda to bring you this webinar and my colleague Christine, who will be a co-moderator with me, uh, will uh, talk more about Ashinaga Uganda. Uh, Christine, uh, do you want to introduce yourself to, to the uh, Congress? Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, uh, good morning, uh, good evening, again, from where you are. This is Christine Naluboa. I'm going to be moderating from the Ugandan side. I'm working at Ashinaga Uganda Rainbow House as the admin uh, coordinator. Welcome on board. Welcome. Thank you so much, Kristen. Next, we're going to hear introductions from uh, our candidates who are going to introduce themselves and uh, they can tell us their name, country, and um, anything they're grateful for. So first I will start with Aro. Aro, can you introduce yourself? Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. My name is Jacob Barok. I'm from the youngest uh, country in Africa, South Sudan. Uh, but currently, I'm living in Kenya as a refugee. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for joining me. Thank you so much, Arok. Uh, next, can we have Cynthia to introduce herself? Hello everyone, I'm Cynthia, I'm a Cameroonian and it's a pleasure meeting you all today. Thank you so much, Cynthia. Next, uh, Francis, the floor is yours. Francis will join us in a few minutes. And next, um, without wasting any more time, um, those who are joining us for the first time, I think you'll be wondering who are these people? Where are they from? Uh, what's Ashinaga? Uh, I'm going to explain to you what Ashinaga is and what we do in a few seconds. Um, if you can please uh, wait for a few seconds. So Ashinaga is a Japanese uh, organization with headquarters here in Tokyo, Japan. Uh, we provide uh, financial support and emotional care to young people around the world who have lost either one or both of their parents. Uh, we have a history of more than 55 years, and um, we've enabled more than 100,000 uh, orphan students gain higher education. So this is about Ashinaga, and in Ashinaga, we have the Ashinaga Africa Initiative, which is an educational uh, leadership program that cultivates future leaders to contribute to the development of Sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, the, AI scholars are, the AI scholars have lost either one or both of their parents, and are committed to return back to Sub-Saharan Africa to initiate change, innovation, and development. Uh, the Ashinag Africa Initiative provides um, access to full financial aid to study in universities abroad. So we have scholars who have been to universities in, in Japan, in the UK, um, in uh, France, US, Brazil. So we have people who have gone to universities over the world. Um, it, it, we have uh, three stages of the uh, Ashinaga Africa Initiative. First, the study and preparation camp, which takes place in uh, either Uganda for the Anglophone countries and um, Senegal for the Francophone countries. Anglophone is people who speak uh, English, then Francophone people who speak French. So if you speak English, then you'll be able to go to Uganda 
for uh, study camp and preparation camp. Then uh, if you speak French, then you go to uh, Senegal. Uh, this will change depending on the COVID situation. Uh, the camp may be online or it will be in person depending on how the COVID situation is. Yes, and the next stage for this Ashnag African Initiative is the university abroad. So after spending in Uganda for one year and applying to universities abroad, you'll be able to go to universities abroad and study in those countries I mentioned, uh, Japan, UK, US, uh, France, um, Brazil, and other countries, be able to study abroad. And um, yeah, you'll be able to experience so many things by studying abroad. Then the third step is about the after graduation. Um, we, after you graduate, you're still under the program, so we shall, um, we have uh, other, um, we have so many um, programs after, after your graduation, so you will still under be the program. So what do you need to be under, we all do need to be uh, able to qualify for this wonderful program. What do you need to be able, uh, how are you eligible to uh, participate in this program? Uh, first, to be eligible to this program, you should have lost either one or both of your parents. Um, you were born after 1st uh, September 1999. You should have completed secondary school and received your final examinations within the last two years. So uh, after 2nd August uh, 2019, and you, have re and you hope to receive your results or you have received your results. Uh, if you're hoping to receive your results, you should receive the results before February 28, uh, next year, 2022. You should be a citizen um, and you have, uh, or you have completed high school and, uh, in uh, any of the sub-Saharan African countries. So you have to be a citizen of sub-Saharan African country. You have completed high school in one of the sub-Saharan African countries. And uh, you do not have the means to attend universities abroad uh, without external, external support. Uh, you should be ranked in the top 10% of, of your class. You should be able to participate in two preparation camps, which I mentioned earlier on and have no dependents uh, who could interfere with the academic progress. All these uh, criteria I'm mentioning about right now, they are, in, they are at the Ashinaga website. So if you go to the Ashinaga website, you'll be able to find all these criteria explained really well. Um, the last uh, eligibility criteria is you should be committed to return back home after graduation to initiate change. So the Ashinaga African Initiative uh, application process uh, has two stages. The first one is the registration. Then the second one is the application. For registration, uh, you send us your uh, about your details. Then we confirm if you're eligible for the program. Then uh, if you're eligible, we send you the uh, link to uh, apply for the full program. So for the registration, you can uh, register via three ways. First, the online, which we recommend you to use. Um, you can go to um, ashinaga.smapply.io and submit your documents and you about you. Uh, please submit your documents in JPEG or PDF. Um, if you cannot use this online application, you can use email, um, fill out the paper form, uh, scan it and send it to us at admissions.en at ashinaga.org. This is the email right here down. Uh, please take up the email. Please take note of the email. You can also find it on our website. Uh, we do not advise you to use post because you never know it may take long to uh, reach to us right now due to covid uh, many airplanes cancel their flights so it may take long to reach to us and it may reach after the deadline uh, and you will not be uh, eligible so uh, we advise you to use either online or email but if you have to use post then you can post the up uh, your application to us at ashnag africa initiative recruitment team and uh, this is the box number. So if you want to use POST, please use this one. You can find all this information on our website. For the documents we need, uh, we need a copy of your uh, national ID or passport, copy of your term reports or high school, uh, or for high school, uh, copy of your final secondary school examination certificate for your pass, uh, final certificate for examinations. Uh, this is really important. The deadline and for the registration is on 28th January, 2022 at midnight GMT. Please and please make sure to submit your application before the deadline. Don't wait on the last day of the deadline just to rush and write everything to submit uh, um, the application, the registration. Um, electricity may be off, internet may be off, or you may have some, you may interfere something that will not enable you to submit your, your registration. So please make sure to submit your registration as early as possible so that you have more time to work on the application and uh, we can uh, review your, your registration early in time. So please make sure to submit your registration before the 28th January 
2022. For the Lusophone uh, countries, those who speak uh, Portuguese, the deadline is uh, 15th October in two weeks. So please submit in two weeks. So the stage two for the um, application is the, uh, the uh, application, uh, the, the formal application. And uh, it's, you can do it online or via email. If you want to do it online, we shall send you a link uh, with the uh, application and you click on that link and you'll be able to um, complete your application. Uh, if you want to submit via email, uh, you uh, again do the same thing, uh, write your application, scan all the documents, submit them via JPEG or PDF and send them to ashinaga uh, to admissions.en at ashinaga.org. So same thing. And uh, for the actually for the uh, application, we, are, we require uh, more documents than the registration. These are the documents we require. First, the copy of all your term reports for the last two years, copy of your final secondary school uh, certificates, copy of your academic transcripts if you've been going to um, um, a university, copy of the death certificate of your deceased parents, uh, copy of your birth certificate, copy of your certificates for extracurricular activities if you have any, and a letter of recommendation from your teacher or principal. Please uh, start to gather these documents as early as possible so that you don't wait until the last moment and, um, and, and you miss out on uh, any documents. So start right now to gather these documents. These are the documents we need. You can find this information on our website. And again, something really important, the deadline is on 7th February, 2022. Uh, as you saw that there are many documents we require, uh, please submit all uh, the documents way before time so that you can have more time uh, to prepare. And just in case something comes up, uh, you're able to um, forego that. So please submit your documents before time. And who is the next lead of Africa? We are waiting for application. Um, you've taken the first step already by watching this webinar. You who is watching this webinar, You've taken the first step already by uh, listening to us, listening to the people who are going to be uh, interviewing you or recruiting you, listening to the um, scholars, to the candidates who have passed through this program. So you, uh, you have taken the first step already. Just go on, apply. This is the uh, link for the application and the QR code. Just go on, apply. And if you have any questions, you can send us an email or you can uh, send us a message on our Facebook page, Facebook page, Twitter page, or Instagram, and we shall get back to you. Please apply before the deadline. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, next, we're going to next we're going to hear from um, Christine, who is going to tell us about uh, Ashinaga, Uganda. Christine, the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for the explanation. I'm very sure that everyone knows how to apply and we are waiting for the applications. Please allow me to introduce Ashinaga Uganda, the activities in Ashinaga Uganda, because uh, Kaira has talked about the study camps in Uganda. So I think it is interesting for everyone to know what happens in uh, Ashinaga Uganda, the study camps and the preparation camps. Allow me to share my screen so that we can um, we can be on the same page. Okay, I guess everyone is there. Yes, first I want to introduce how Ashinaga ended up in Africa in Uganda, especially in Uganda. So I want to give an idea how Ashinaga had an international summer camp. And this international camp, we invited many children, many orphaned children. And during this camp, um, we had often from different countries. We had circuits, Taiwan, Kosovo, Uganda, among others. And during this camp, uh, AIDS as a problem was discussed um, by the orphans. Then we, and the different challenges of AIDS. So AIDS became a problem. And then we ended up going to Uganda. So now we have um, we have Ashinaga Uganda after the discussions which happened in the international summer camp. So we have Uganda and if I give you the details, so in Uganda we have two offices. We have the Ashinaga Uganda Rainbow House where I'm now working at and also we have the Uganda Ashinaga Uganda Rainbow 
Ashinaga Uganda Kokorijuku. This is where the Ashinaga Africa Initiative is based. So we have two offices in Uganda. Let me explain some details about Ashinaga Uganda Rainbow House. Ashinaga Rainbow House, Ashinaga Uganda Rainbow House started in 2003 and our offices are located in Nansana. I'm very sure you don't know where Nansana is, but just for you, everyone to have an idea. So we are located in Nansana and in the district called Wakiso. And what we do, we provide uh, the psychological and social support to, orphan, uh, orphan, to AIDS orphans. Now we expanded our scope because uh, after realizing that uh, not only orphans, uh, not AIDS causes uh, children to be often, but there are other cases like accidents and other diseases, especially cancer. So now it's broad, uh, even if it's even if our, um, our children or an orphan had cases of um, cancer or accidents, still we take care of these uh, children. Um, so the Shinaka Rainbow House, uh, we have a number of registered uh, children. These are often children. We have like 1,000 uh, children. And we have different activities, as you can see there. So we have a care program. I'll explain little later on. And the care program, this is where we take care of the, of the students or the children. So they come at our facility and we talk about the challenges in this world, the challenges in Uganda as orphans. Yes, so we have care programs on every Saturday. And then we have the Terracoya literacy education. So this education system, we have a facility. I will show you everyone later. This facility, we invite children who have never had any opportunity to be at school or to study. So we give them an opportunity to come to our facility to study until the level we realize that ready, they're ready to be um, be sent to the normal Ugandan schools. So we have uh, like 100 uh, students, children who are under the Terracoya literacy education. So we have overseas education. We also have exchange programs uh, to Japan where we they invite our students who are at university level. Also we have the high school scholarships. Uh, the high school scholarships too, we have the Ugandan high school scholarships and also we also receive um, invitations from high school uh, schools in Japan. So um, we have another one, we provide uh, scholastic materials. Uh, by providing scholastic materials, all our orphans receive uh, the support, the books, the pens, the pencils, all the materials used at school. So we provide them uh, each term at school. Also, we do home visits. The purpose of this, we want to know whether the children are in good health and also the home environment is suitable for them as young beings. So we go to the homes to have an idea and also to understand the home settings. Also, we do the outings. I'll, I'll give an uh, an idea. So that is our office in Uganda, the Shinaga Uganda Rainbow House. And also this photo on my right is an, a, a sample of how children are taken when they go to this different um, uh, sites, important uh, heritage sites for them to study and learn more about Uganda. So we also have outings for them to enjoy together as a team. Then this is an example of the Terra Choir Literacy Program. Uh, the photo here, it is, uh, this is the current uh, Terra Choir building. And it was um, a setup with, it's, it is a setup within Uganda, Rainbow House, but it's based on a system which was in Japan, in the private education in Japan, which existed in the Edo period. So we got an idea, and now in Uganda, we have the Terracoya um, Literacy Program. You can see the children here studying, and also here is one of our first students to Japan to study at the university, and also on my right, that is the Shinaga Rainbow House office. So let me, please allow me to introduce the Shinaga Uganda Kokorojuku and also the AAI. Of course, uh, Kaira has already uh, explained much on the details regarding this. And also, as you know, it's just an international leadership uh, program that uh, gives the next generation uh, all leaders to contribute to the development of the different sub-Saharan African countries. 
Um, this program started in 2014. As you can see, we've had an improvement. Uh, this is amazing. Even if you've had different effects of COVID, you can see the impact of COVID, but um, the numbers have been increasing every year. The numbers are increasing and the coverage of the countries also it's increasing and this is amazing. So if you can see the photo here, this is our first bunch of the students in 2004, we had 10 students. Some of our students have already graduated from different universities abroad and countries abroad. I think this uh, photo on the right, it was our former, the former students two or three years ago. Yes, so the numbers are increasing. If anyone can be part of this amazing um, program. The main uh, structure of the AI leadership program, mainly in Uganda, is to provide the professional development skills, the academic uh, development skills. I'll explain more um, in the next slide. And also the personal development skills. For the study camp, and Kaira has already talked about the study camp, but I would like to give you an ideas and also an image of what happens during these camps. So usually, um, if everything is set and well, so we have a study camp and a study camp is for six months. It runs from June to December. And the purpose of this study camp is for the students to give students an idea of what time to think about what they want to study at the university, to do their university applications, uh, to do the exam preparations in Uganda, the SATs, the IELTS, and also other prior preparations which are required before they submit their university applications. So the study camp runs from June to December. And after that, students go back uh, to their countries. That is around December, mid-December. They go back to their countries for the Christmas break and also prepare to come back for the preparation camp. For the preparation camp, it runs for two months. And the main uh, objective uh, for the preparation camp is for the students to learn the culture, the life skills, and what happens in those countries, what should they expect really regarding the countries and also the universities. So it will be more of like, how do you move, how do you use cars, how do you cook, how do you read, which language are you supposed to use, and everything. So that's what we do in the preparation camp. And this is for two months. It runs from May to June. And immediately after their preparation camp, uh, students go back to their countries. And this time, they will be setting off to be ready to go to their respective countries. That is all I have to present uh, regarding the two offices. And uh, thank you. You're welcome and arigato in Japanese. Yes, so um, allow me to invite uh, the students to, to do their presentations. And for now, we'll start with Arok. Arok, are you there? Yeah, please, uh, please get ready for your presentation. Thank you. Um, like I said earlier, my name is Jacob Rock. I'm from South Sudan. So my destination country of studies is US where I intend to major in political science and planning to concentrate in comparative political economy. So before starting my presentation, I always like to start with a quote and today I'll give you a quote on problem solving. Uh, so Duke Ellington was once quoted saying that a problem is a chance for you to do your best. This quote has played a major role in molding me into the person I am today because it was by understanding this quote, I was able to conquer most of the setbacks I faced back and made me perceive problem as an opportunity to learn new uh, lessons that I can turn into my strength. Okay, like before I applied for Ashinaga Africa Initiative, I was under another scholarship by the name Easter to Foundation Program but the pandemic effects hit them severely, leading to the company's closure. So I had to look for other means to further my studies. And that's when I came across Ashinaga and I was actually to apply actually, because this is a great program that I've never come across them. Uh, and I do appreciate what they are doing right now to us. So when I applied like, uh, one thing that made me to apply for Ashinaga is when I did my own research and I found out that Ashinaga have helped over 110,000 orphan students to 
gain access to higher education in the last uh, in the last uh, 50 years of existence. And uh, in addition to that, uh, Ashinaga is not just a scholarship program that may enable you to study abroad, but it is a leadership program designed to turn your potential into use and become a, a, a better version of yourself. Uh, for example, I, I never thought that one day I would meet a guy from Gambia and places like Sierra, Sierra Leone, but right now I have like uh, over 26 friends from different sub-Saharan countries and uh, the bonds and the connections we have already created with them is amazing and I do call them my family. So I'm also like, I have my personal goals and future achievement that I would like to, to achieve before uh, retiring or maybe, uh, I don't believe like you can, there is an end of anything like when something ends, it is always a beginning of something else. So my goals are like, or I'll just say in Japanese, Kokurozashi, I am that one person who believes in only a life lived for that's a life worthwhile. So after finishing my degree in political science, I want to come back to my country and dedicate my life serving mankind. And that is why uh, one of the things that I want to achieve professionally as an achievement is that I want to be among the young African leaders that will help eradicate bad governance and economy inflation in Africa, which are major crises affecting the third world countries like in my country, South Sudan, currently we are facing hyperinflation. And if we can get young leaders with new ideas that can bring change to the country, I believe I'm one of them who will be able to do that. So secondly, I, secondly, I also want to, I also want to make accessibility of electricity more easy in my country and affordable. And thirdly, I want to invest intensively in artificial intelligence to help, uh, to help in change in the climate change in the world. And lastly, but not the least, I want to build an orphanage because like uh, I didn't, I don't think the, the experience of being an orphan was something I really enjoyed. So I wouldn't want to see any other person go through what I went through. So thank you so much. My name's uh, Arok, uh, I'm from South Sudan. Uh, for any question on, on maybe if you want to get some tips on how to be a successful applicant, you can reach me at, uh, uh, on my email, through my email at uh, arokdeng22 at gmail.com. Thank you. That was my presentation. Have a good day. Uh, keep uh, keep uh, watching and get more tips on how to be a successful applicant. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Arok. Uh, indeed, uh, Ashimaga Africa Initiative is not a scholarship uh, program, but a leadership uh, program, because I can see how you're thinking of a bigger, bigger life opportunity uh, through Ashimaga Africa Initiative. And this is amazing to hear your story. Next, uh, Cynthia, let's hear the story from Cynthia the reasons why you applied. So Cynthia from Cameroon, please um, join the floor. Okay, thank you, Christine. Hello once more, I'm Cynthia and I'm a Cameroonian. Uh, I'm going to be studying in Japan. I will be measuring in international relations or liberal arts. Most often you're going to like the, why should I apply to the Ashinanga African Initiative? To me, I think applying to the Ashinanga African Initiative was just based on what I've lived and what I've seen around me. So I've been a student at the university, but at the same time, I did not really feel I was up to what I wanted. I wanted an educational life in which I was going to be able to give back to my society. So then a good friend of mine introduced me to the African Ashinanga African Initiative. So by then I did not know that uh, the chances for uh, students to study abroad for the undergraduate. So I was like, oh God, I do not know. So I'm just going to give it a try. And from there, I just want to tell you that if something is not forbidden, 
then it is possible you can do it. So then I tried and look at what I had to do and I decided to apply. During my application, things were not really that sweet because of the COVID in Cameroon. There were times uh, we experienced a lockdown. I could not like get all the documents, but thanks. I contacted some of my teachers who really helped me through that and today I'm very thankful. So uh, like I applied, so for now, I think that Ashinanga is just an opportunity for me to study in one of the best universities in the world and be able to give back to my society. Through international relations or liberal arts, I wish to someday work towards good governance in my native Cameroon, like advocate for the rights of humans all over the globe. And so to me, this is really an opportunity. And I want you all to like give, a, give it a try. Don't think as if maybe we are just selecting one candidate for each country, we are not going to be selected. Just give it a try. As I said, if it is not forbidden, you can do it. Don't like limit yourself to the number of places. Thank you and keep watching. Thank you, Cynthia. Thank you for your um, presentation. Yes, that's a nice, uh, interesting word. So if it is not forbidden, we can try it. Thank you very much. Um, let me invite uh, Kaira to explain more about the students and their future plans. Thank you so much, uh, Christine. Uh, yes, uh, you've heard from the students. Um, I'm going to show the slides. So this is the slide for uh, Arok. Uh, he's, as he's told, his destination is, is US and he's going to major in political science. Uh, so this is him. And then uh, we, we also heard from um, Cynthia, um, who is uh, going to come to Japan and she wants to do liberal arts or international relations. So we're going, for the next round, we're going to have a panel discussion where we ask uh, Cynthia and uh, Arok about different questions uh, um, about anything. So if you have any questions, put them in the comment section and we're going to answer them. Or if you have any questions for the uh, for either Cynthia or Arok, you can also post them in the comment section. Uh, we're going to ask them the questions. So uh, first, the panel discussion for um, Cynthia and Arok. Um, I will first ask both of them, uh, Cynthia and Arok, um, how did you come to know about the Ashinaga Africa Initiative? So I'll first with uh, Rook, you can uh, um, turn on your camera and answer us. So I first learned about Af uh, Ashinaga African Initiative when like, uh, it was back here in 2020, October. I received a, a, a link from one of my friends who's currently living in South Sudan. So he told me to fill up the form, but it wasn't actually for Ashinaga. It was for uh, another program called METO that is uh, found in the US. They were to share my details to, uh, to different universities and organizations um, uh, to other bodies like uh, uh, scholarship programs bodies. And that's when like uh, I was informed like uh, in this, this year, January, that's when I received an email from, from METO that uh, Ashinaga were interested in me, that I had met all the criteria to be uh, to apply for Ashinaga. So that's how I learned. I first came across Ashinaga. Thank you. Thank you so much, Aro. How about, um, Cynthia, how did you learn about the Ashinaga African Initiative? Okay, uh, I learned about the program through a very good friend of mine. So it was before the applications were even open, the registration. So he informed me beforehand. So I was ready even before the, the program was open. So I can say throughout, I was cool because I knew about the program beforehand. Thank, thank you so much, Tensia. Yes, um, yeah, I'll then ask both of you questions so you can turn your cameras on. And um, why did you decide to study abroad? Like, uh, many people are worried about studying abroad. They are worried that they will leave their parents, they will leave their family, they will leave their friends. How did you take the initiative to go and decide that I'm going to study abroad? I, I want to apply for the Ashinaga African Church program. Um, first with uh, Cynthia, then after I go to Arok. Well, that's a good question. Like to me, I think 
from a very young age, what I've always wanted is the best education. So if it meant for me, I had to leave my comfort zone. Yeah, I think that was a good thing, a good decision I had to make. It's not always easy, but one thing is if you know what you want, like if you can take the risks, I think that's possible. And also for with the Ashinaga African Initiative Program, that's not just as if you're going to be going to college, no. Uh, to that you are going to be like ha having that connectivity to the society, unleashing your skills. And so it was just welcoming to me. So I couldn't really think of any other thing than just giving it a try. Thank you so much. That's exciting. How about Arup? How did they are? Uh, how about you? So I personally do like taking risks. So if there's anything that I really enjoyed during the application process was that I uh, I believe that I was going to go to the Japan. I didn't know that I was going to go to the US. So one thing, the main reason why I wanted to go to, the, to Japan was to learn a new language. And maybe like, that's one thing that uh, I really have like, I had that, uh, that desire to go to other countries. And one of the other reasons that I found that I wanted to go to abroad was because like uh, maybe in terms of uh, educational point of, of the education quality, I think abroad uh, we are far much ahead of us a little bit. So that's one of the reasons why I wanted to, to study abroad. Thank you so much. Uh, next, I will ask um, Cynthia. So, what kept you motivated? What kept you pushing to apply for the uh, program? Um, like, what kept you moving? What was your main source of inspiration? Okay, like to me, what kept me working is that unlike some of the institutions in my country or around Africa, I knew that Ashinanga was going to like give merit to those that participated. So I kept going because I knew if this is for me, then I'm going to get it. So I knew it was going to be out of merit. So if I put in my all, I was sure I was going to get the scholarship. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, about Arab. I hope it won't sound like it's out of topic, but if there's my biggest inspiration like was to celebrate the 20th anniversary of my mom. She passed away in 2001. So like I wanted to achieve something in her 20th anniversary and I'm happy that I did something. And it came true and I'm so happy like uh, I'll be able to celebrate it with, uh, with an achievement that has always been my dream and that's why one of the things that kept me going, like when I knew that it was, I knew the, uh, the whole application process was very competitive, but I knew that, uh, okay, if God will stand by my side, then I can beat those who, other students who are applying just like me. Uh, so I think it was because of my mother. I wants to make her proud. <laughs> Oh, that's, that's really sweet. Uh, thank you for that. And uh, so to follow up on that for both of you, um, were you guardians or people who are taking care of you, maybe your parents or brothers or sisters, were they supportive for you to apply or how did you navigate this to, uh, for, so that you can apply and they're supportive for you? Uh, yeah, since I can go first. Okay. Since from the very beginning, I knew this was going to be a very competitive uh, competition. So I decided I wasn't going to tell anybody from the very beginning because I did not want people to think that, no, this is a very strange journey you want to end back on. So I kept it to myself till when I was called for the interview. Yeah, I think that was when I talked to it to my family that this is what I've been doing. So by then they gave me all the support I needed and to that I'm very grateful. How about Arok? As for me, uh, I had informed my sister who's currently living in Kakuma. I told her about the whole program and I was supposed to apply for another scholarship, but when I was just looking at uh, some of the benefits that I would get from both a uh, scholarship since this one was uh, a leadership program and my interest has always been like, I've always, people have always been telling me that if you'll be a leader one day, because I remember back in high school, I was the school president, ah, deputy president and in primary school, I was the school president too. 
So there's this thing that I always wanted to be like, uh, okay, if ever we are ever going to have another leader apart from the current president, then I, I want it to be me. So that's why, I, like, uh, so I will always, uh, that's why I had to tell my sister and she was very encouraging. She told me, keep on, try on, like, I know you are very bright, you can do this. So our words kept me going and I'm thankful that she stood by my side and other friends who, are also, who, who also supported me too. So thank you. Oh, that's really inspiring, Aro. We are looking forward to you becoming the next, the next leader in South Sudan and you'll be able to <laughs> make the changes. <laughs> That's good. And um, yes, uh, what techniques did you use to uh, in the application? Uh, you talked about that uh, it was a competitive application with so many other people, and yeah, we received so many applications, but what techniques do you think you used that uh, convinced us to uh, recruit you, uh, both of you, like um, Cynthia and Arok? So first we go with Arok this time, then next uh, Cynthia. So if there's something that made me stood out, it was because like uh, I was authentic and original. I didn't want to be someone else. So I was giving out my, uh, my experience and my future goals. They had to align with what I am currently doing. And so like when I was choosing also, uh, when I was also writing an essay about uh, my future goals, they had to align with what I want already and like what I'm, already doing. So I think that's one thing that kept me outstanding. And also because like, uh, I did like I put more work into what I was writing. So I would wake up every morning, check where the, maybe the mistake I didn't see maybe the previous day at night, I could find them in the morning. So that is something that I found out that uh, helped me a lot to do the application process. So thank you. Thank you so much. How about Cynthia? How about you? Okay. Just a fact, I learned about the program before time. I had a lot of time to go through my essays and everything. So I like program this week. I'm going to handle this particular topic. So like the most essays I took a lot of time on was the last two essays of a thousand words, which you need to talk about how you grew up and your future goal. So those essays to me, I first asked myself, telling my story in a hundred, in a thousand words, what am I going to leave out? So it seems too small for me. So I had to choose those particular moments of my life. And to write that particular essay, what I learned from me is that the AAI, you know you've gone through, had times of struggles, but in those struggles, what have you done? That is what will unleash your leadership potentials. It's not as if you need to be looking for sympathy. Everybody has gone through trash, but you have gone through it. What have you done? That is what I was looking for. And that's what I try to develop throughout my ACEs. And for my second essay of a, a thousand words on my future goal, I elaborated it out like say, now what am I going to do if I'm selected? Being selected is one thing and having a future you want to like accomplish is another. So to me, I like said, what if I'm selected? I put like, I took it as if now I need to look for things around my society I really want to work on and the Anglophone crisis or the war that has been going on in Cameroon. I like said, this war has been going on. I want to read international relations. What can I do? What can I do for my country in the future? So to me, it was like, if I read international relations, I need to like understand the complexity of such wars because it's not just in Cameroon, we have the Boko Haram, we have the SARS in Nigeria all around the world. So to me, I just wanted to like be open to the whole world, like looking for what is happening in the world and how I can bring a change. That was the motivation I had. And to those that I also applying, I really urge you to develop your ACE as well. Take the time, you know, essay writing is not always good for everybody, but be authentic, just let everything flow. Don't lie, they're going to know you're lying, you're going to prove that in the interview. So just let everything flow, don't lie, be you. Be you is the key, what I can tell you. I cannot add anything to what you say. That's really what you're looking for. 
And um, my last question, uh, before Christine is also going to ask you um, a couple of questions, but my last will be, what kind of preparations did you have to do uh, prior to the um, submitting your application? You mentioned a little bit about uh, essays and all that, but for the interview, for the exams, and for everything else, how did you prepare? Uh, maybe how, and how, how long in advance did you start the preparations? Let's start with uh, a rock first, then a sincere next. Uh, so like uh, for the interview, when I proceeded to like every step, you'll be informed like the, your uh, like your proceeding. So when I got an email that I was, uh, I love to schedule for an interview, then, then I, I started like, uh, I started working on the tips that I, I was provided by, by the recruitment team. And I started practice in advance, like every day, even working, when I was working maybe to the shop, I would find myself speaking to myself in order just to prepare myself in, in advance. And for the exam, uh, for the start, like uh, it consists of mathematics and English. So I was really good at mathematics, but the English that is used in, such English was a little bit difficult for me, so I had to do more practice. So, so are some of the things that I did in prior, like in order for me to proceed to the other uh, level, like uh, another step beyond it. Thank you. Yes, how about since there? Yeah? Okay, for me, I can say for the exams, I like studied. <laughs> I'm not very good with maths, but that did not stop me from studying. So I had to do a lot of maths, a lot of English. English, I can say I'm a little bit stable there. So I used a lot of time solving the maths. And after that, when I had to go for the interview, the interview, when they'll call you for the interview, you're going to feel that ish, you really need to work. So even walking on the road, I had my phone, I'm trying to record myself to see if I can really express myself that way, if things, whether I'm not going to fumble. So I did a lot of practice even before going for the interview. So I think for the interview, you just need to practice, practice and practice. And there's one thing that Ashinaga Afghanistan will be with you throughout, even before the exams, the set of tips, you need to do this, you need to do that. That really helped me because I followed all of the process steps. And even for the interview, they will tell you, you need to do this, do that. So I made sure I followed all the steps. And what again, I can say that's really all I did. And yeah. Thank you so much. So next we're going to invite uh, Christine. Uh, to ask you a few questions before we go to the Q&A. Uh, please remember, if you're watching us from Facebook, uh, remember to post your questions on our chat if you have any questions, and we're going to answer them in the question and answer session. Um, yes, so Christine, the floor is yours if, uh, to ask these uh, candidates. Uh, thank you, Kaira. Thank you, um, Arok and Cynthia, for answering the questions. Um, yes, while answering the questions, something came to my head. We were in the pandemic and different countries were under lockdown and different situations were happening. So my first question is, how was the online application procedures du during the pandemic? Where the internet was tricky, you know, going out and everything. So how was the application online? We'll start with the rock. So, like, um, by then I was in the refugee camp and the internet uh, connection is a little bit unstable over there. So that's when I decided I had to move to a better place where I could uh, maybe get a stable connection. So I came to Nairobi and that's when I started uh, working on my application process. And uh, at least like, you know, everything, there's nothing that is for free. So visiting the, the cafe, the internet cafe and cyber cafe and any other any other place to get help, they all cost money. So that is something that I found was a little bit uh, hard for me, but thank God I, I managed it and I was it was successful. And the whole application, since it was uh, online, I find it was much better if, uh, than the 
the individual maybe face to face one. So I think the application online was much better. It favored me more than the face to face. I, that is for me. Okay, thank you. What about uh, Cynthia? Okay, for the online application, I think when I was working on that, I think it was a lockdown in Cameroon, so I couldn't go to the internet cafe and I was not sure to have internet connection all through. So what I did was I went, I went to a cyber, I printed the hard copy of the application form. So while I was not online, I worked on it with the hard copy. So that really made me to be working throughout. And there's also, I was also worried because my school was also closed and I had to uh, have my transcript. So what I did, I rechecked and I saw I could apply just with my report cards, which I had all of them. So I just used my report cards and it's after the interview, I went to my school and had a transcript. So I did not really face major difficulties during the pandemic. Okay, so that's interesting. Even still the pandemic, you had to do something to be able to apply for the leadership program. Yes, my next question, I'm going to turn a little bit away from the application and I would like to know uh, both of you what you expect uh, from your participation in the Ashinaga Africa Initiative throughout, regardless of whether the study comes until your graduation period. Uh, I would like to know what you expect from the leadership program, from this leadership program. This time round, we'll start with Cynthia. Okay, throughout everything I can say for now, I just hope that after the prep study and the prep camp, I should be ready to go to campus. And after that, at the end of the day, I should be the leader I've always wanted to be. So I should stand now and make sure I like have my future goal accomplished and even connect to the Ashinaga family and the entire world. And that's already something I know is going to happen. So I just wish to accomplish my goals. Okay. What about uh, Iraq? Uh, as for me, uh, uh, through these periods, uh, like for example, right now we are doing our study camp. I, I want to build the connection that I will need maybe in future, be able to know that if I need this, I'll be able to contact, to contact somebody. Uh, maybe to I'll, I'll be able to know who, who and who to contact when I'm maybe facing something. And secondly, I want to also learn how to run uh, programs like Ashinaga, for example, like, uh, like I said earlier, I want to build an orphanage. I want to be able to learn from Ashinaga how to manage such programs. So that is something I want to learn through the AI program. So those are some of the things that I want to learn and maybe how to to sharpen my leadership skills while I'm with the Shinaga students, candidates, and uh, the scholars and all the staff and those who are engaged in the whole program at large. So thank you. Those are all the things that I want to do while I'm with the Shinaga. Thank you both for sharing. I can see you have uh a bigger plan ahead of you. So I wish you all the best in that. Um, so I'm going to ask an individual questions. Uh, so I will start with um, Cynthia. What advice would you give your girl and applying from Africa? But what advice would you give uh, any girls uh, thinking about this opportunity? Okay, my advice to all the guys that think they should apply is that we have passed that century that other girl cannot do wonderful things in the world. This is just an opportunity for you. Believe you can like add substance to the world. Like have faith in yourself and know that you can accomplish anything in this world if you work hard for it. So don't delimit yourself because you think you're a girl. There are a lot of marvelous things you can still do to yourself or to the world. And the world is eagerly waiting for the girl, the women, all to do the things. So I just ask you to take this opportunity and apply. You can still do a lot of things you can't even imagine for now. 
Thank you, Cynthia. We are waiting for quite a number of applications from girls then. Um, Arok, this question goes to you. Um, usually uh, applicants who are refugees, uh, they're worried or they're scared uh, to apply for such opportunities which um, require them to travel to other countries. Uh, what advice would you give them as a person? So as for the refugees, like uh, when I was applying, I didn't have my national ID or maybe any, uh, any document from my home country. So when I was applying, I presented my UNHCR manifest and that is what I use as my ID. So if like you are applying as a, as a refugee, just get the document uh, ready in advance uh, there is also like the death certificate. I don't know if it is, uh, they are provided by the UNHCR because I tried to look for one and I couldn't get one. So maybe uh, the, the whole team will advise you on steps to follow in order for you to submit maybe an alternative document for that. Uh, so as for you as a refugee, like I think this is the only chance for you to make a better like change your own life like for example right now i i think this is a life-changing opportunity for me at first i didn't think that uh, I, I never thought that i was going to get the chance because maybe they would doubt me that i was not a south sudanese because one of the thing one of the criteria is that you have to show your nationality through the documents and i didn't have those but uh through the document that i got from un uh, I was able to proceed with my application process and thankfully I'm, I've made it to be a candidate. Hopefully I'll make it to also to be a scholar by next year. So if I did it, you can also do it as a refugee too. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you both of you. Um, that shows that it's very possible because uh, through all the challenges uh, you managed uh, to, to apply and then you were very successful with the applications. My last question will be that, um, how are you preparing right now for your travel? Before you travel, how are you preparing? How, what are you studying and what plans are you covering right now before your departure to the different countries? I'll start with uh, a rock. So currently like we are still taking our classes for in preparation for the SAT and IELTS exams, which we are, which will commence by next month. So uh, I believe I've done enough for the preparation. So like once I'm done with the classes, uh, I want also to be prepared uh, like uh, I want to be prepared, like uh, I have to prepare my mindset in advance for the preparation time, hopefully it will happen in Uganda. So I just have to get all the documents that are required for, for, uh, for, for the traveling purpose to the Uganda for the preparation time. So like, I think uh, I've already acquired all the documents that I want and I'm prepared like uh, already that uh, there's something ahead that I love to do once I'm done with my classes. And that is going to be Uganda, maybe a little on go to the US. Uh, so that's the thing. What about Cynthia? How are you planning to study abroad? Well, <laughs> but now I'm still like, my fo most focus now is on my ECT and my, and my art. So I believe, and after that, I'm really going to do some things, maybe try some new things in my country or eat a lot of food, which I might miss when I leave my country. So I'm still preparing to go out and what do I still need? So I don't really, I'm not even thought of what I really need to do for now because my priority now is my IT and my ACT. So I think after that, I can really, really have a thing to do that. I must maybe take a walk and take a walk to some things like, I want me to be memorable. I want my last days in my country to be memorable. <laughs> 
Yes, um, I hope that you can prepare. You can prepare well before your departure. Thank you for sharing all this. I think everyone has an idea of what they expected to do if they're interested to apply for this program. Thank you so much. Please allow me to uh, take back to the floor to Kahira to continue the presentation. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you so much, everyone. I like um, Cynthia's last answer. Eat lots of good food before you depart. Before you depart, uh, eat lots of jollof rice, lots of fufu, lots of matoke, and everything before you depart. Because when you come this side, you don't be able to eat the jollof rice. You don't be able to eat the fufu. So, eat lots of that before you uh, leave to go abroad. And um, yes, lastly, uh, um, we have we had uh, lots of questions. Uh, thank you, everyone, who has been uh, sending the questions and co in the comment section. We've got lots of questions, and we if we try to reply to them all of uh, all the questions right now, we made uh, the webinar will go for about five hours. Uh, so I'm going to answer only one question, and we shall reply to other questions. Uh, my colleagues will reply to other to all the questions in the um, in the comment section in the next few days. So if you if you do not answer your question right now, please go uh, come back to the uh, to the webin to the to the video, and uh, my colleagues will, will post your reply there. Uh, so watch that; uh, your reply will be there. So please uh, watch that. Uh, we had a question about choosing a university, and um, someone asked how 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 a university is chose, and uh, the answer to that is. Um, pretty simple. We do that with uh, with the students. So you tell us uh, what you want to study and um, which are well, your priorities. And um, we decide that with the student. Uh, but Ashinaga um, decides, it, it, it depends on, uh, Ashinaga decides the final thing, but it depends on other numerous means. For example, the visa requirements to go to that country, the language requirements to go to that uh, university. Some universities require way much higher English. Uh, also, some other universities require a, a little bit okay English uh, level. Uh, we, it depends on the academic grades. Some universities require really high academic grades. Uh, availability of the students desired course. So if you want to study maybe engineering or um, business or anything. So it depends on all that. Uh, that's how we choose the universities uh, together with the student, but also uh, the final decision depends on uh, us as Ashinaga to uh, make the final decision. Uh, before we finish, I would like to get one comment and advice uh, from everyone. And um, first I will start with um, Aro, then I go to Cynthia, then Tina, then I finish uh, with the comments. So comment and advice to people watching to uh, those applicants who uh, who want to apply uh, who are back in Africa. So uh, Arok, you have the floor. Okay, thank you, Mr. Kehira. Uh, my advice to the applicant is that this uh, prepare the documents in advance. And when you are applying, make sure you give it your level best. Be yourself, don't try to be someone else. And by doing that, you succeed. Thank you. Thank you so much. How about Cynthia? Okay, to those apply, as I earlier said, if it is not forbidden, you can do it. That applies to everything you're going to do. Give in your best belief and pray. Prayer helps. <laughs> thank you and good luck as you apply. Um, thank you, Tinsia. Uh, how about Christine? Um, any last comments to um, the people who have been watching the, the webinar? And um, yes, any last comments? Yeah, thank you for watching. Thank you for attending. I would like to uh, advise all those interested to apply. It is possible. It is possible. Don't think it's not possible because of the many countries.